want what you wanted But you don't even trust yourself We were so, we were so, we were so high up in love But not enough to bring us back from where we fell Hey guys, I am getting ready to go to my orientation because it's my first day of my new job. I am now a correctional nurse. I don't know if y'all seen my last nursing video, but that's the reason why I went into nursing school so I could be a correctional nurse. I'm super excited. So guys, get ready with me. And while I'm getting ready, I'm going to be telling you some like interesting facts about me because most of you guys don't really know me that well. Um, so, yeah. Hope you enjoy. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Just to clarify, normally I don't really get ready like this for work, but I have to take pictures for badges today since it is orientation. I wanted to do it like this just because I was getting ready anyways, and I'm going to be bringing you guys along with me way more often. And a lot of you have been reaching out to me on different platforms, TikTok, Instagram, and here. And I wanted you guys to get to know me a little better. I am Mimi, I am a correctional nurse as well as I carry a master's degree in social work where I specialize in childhood trauma while I worked in detention centers, which is probably another reason why I got my passion for working in corrections. I am Puerto Rican and Jamaican, my mom is Puerto Rican and my dad is Jamaican. Si, soy buricua y bilingüe, pero no puedo hablar español aquí, no lo entendidas. So I'm just going to speak English here so you can understand me. Normally, I don't even tell people I speak Spanish. Growing up in my house, we spoke English, and now we speak English with Pato in my house. I have seven siblings, and I'm smack dab in the middle. My relationship is different with every single one of them. I don't want to toot my own horn, but I will say I'm the best sibling. I'm also the shortest one of all my siblings. It's actually funny because when people see me in public, they're like, oh, you're a lot shorter than what I realized. Guys, I am not tall at all. I am 4'10 and a half, and I always say I'm five feet with shoes on. I used to be a big baller ever since I was a little kid. I used to love playing soccer. I would play every chance I would get. I ended up playing in college and then in an adult league. I used to be left striker, and I guess I am left footed. One thing I really started to enjoy doing is spending time on myself. Like self-care, getting my hair done, getting my nails done, or just ripping things apart in my house. Just like a little DIY here and there because it's so much stress relief and my job is so much stress and I need to learn how to take it out in a healthy way instead of just bottling everything up and just sitting there stressed. Like I always preach my patients, self-care is the best care, but I actually need to implement that for myself. As I stated in my previous videos, I am a clinical social worker but I ended up going back to school for nursing because my job ended up paying for people to go back to school because my state got hit really hard with COVID and they were so short nurses. So anybody who did not have a nurse degree, they were willing to go pay for you to go back. So I ended up taking advantage of that and I ended up graduating. Since a lot of my prerequisites were already completed, as well as some of the classes, like the core classes that I needed to take, because I already carried that master's degree. So it only took me about two years to complete everything. A lot of people would say, I don't know how you have three kids and you work a full-time job. The reason I was able to do it is because I worked night shift. And a lot of times, actually, my kids didn't even know that I had a job because I would be gone by the time they would go to sleep and I'd be home by the time they would wake up. And when I'd be studying, I would just be reading my books constantly, constantly, constantly. And typically, I'd work three shifts during the night. So no one would really notice that I'm gone. And I would still be able to time to focus on my studying as well as everything that I needed to do at work. So I didn't feel that stress. And then I still had time for my kids as well as time for myself. Also, since I went back during COVID, at my job, we didn't get a lot of patients on our psychiatric unit because most people were just dealing with whatever they were dealing with at home. I actually am a very big advocate for my patients as well as for mental health and substance use because I have mental health and substance use that runs in my family. And if it was my family, I'd want somebody to give that same passion and care to my family as I do to theirs. Fun fact about me is I have never smoked a cigarette or tried any type of substance. And that's because I've just seen how it can destroy families and people. And I didn't want that for myself. And guys, if you struggle with substance use or any type of substance use or mental health, there is help out there. You can go to your nearest hospital. You can call the hotline. You could. There's so many different support groups online that you're able to utilize as well. I ended up starting YouTube in 2021. Well, me and my husband were talking about starting it, but we didn't know when the right time was. So we ended up buying our house 
and I was like, well, I'm about to redo these stairs. Let me record this because I think it would be cool. And then I was like, well, I'm about to make this kitchen island. Let me record this. Once he was in the bathroom and I was like, let me pull this prank on him. I wanted to pull one so bad on him, but I didn't know at the right time. So I ended up acting like I cut myself and I got the best reaction from him. So we ended up doing another prank on our sister-in-law and it just blew up. So that's why we typically were sticking to pranks. But I also made an informative video on how I made 100 kids as a social worker because it's really a misconception that social workers don't make money. You need to know how to make the money if you're a social worker. It's not just going to be handed to you, but you need to know how to make the money and where to work. So that's why I ended up making that informative video. And that one gets a lot of attention still, and I still get questions about it all the time, which I love because I like breaking down the barriers and these misconceptions. And that's how you educate people is let them know and put out information. I went into social work because I was in the system. And that's why I started off with Department of Children and Family Services, just to see what it was like on the other side. But before I ended up going to social work, I actually really considered doing automotives because for some reason, I'm just like obsessed with cars. But I think working on cars would be more of like a hobby for me. I watch my brothers do it and then I get confused. And my big brother actually works on trains and I don't know how he does it because everything is just so much wires, so much pipes. I just get so confused when he tries to explain anything to me. I do like watching other platforms on how people do crafts or do little hobbies or even work on mechanics because I just find it so fascinating. The other thing I like about other platforms is you can be yourself and do fun, quick videos and still interact with people. It's one thing I like about YouTube shorts or even TikTok is that you can make a fun, quick, silly video and it can still get us so much attention and so much interaction from whole different types of people. Like for me, I watch so many different types of different hobbies and things that I would never even have thought of unless I'm scrolling and like, oh my gosh, this is so cool to watch. And if anybody's noticed that writing on the wall, yes, it is writing. My son, when he was three years old, wrote a permanent marker on my wall saying, hi fish, happy to meet you. And he wrote it right, surprisingly. My son started reading when he was three years old and that's why I ended up believing it because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just so cute. He spelled everything correctly, but it was written backwards. But I just left it because I thought it was cool. In my house, I pick my battles and I'm also the type of person, if something's already done, I don't really overreact because it's already done. I mean, it's easy. I could paint over it if I want to, but it's just a memory that every time I go to the bathroom, I see it and I think it's cute. My favorite foods are lobster, crab, and crawfish, mainly like seafood boil. For some reason, I've always been addicted to it. In Cleveland, my neighbor was from New Orleans, and every year, he would have this big crawfish boil. Top three favorite drinks are Green Tea Arizona, Peach Fanta, and Grape Soda. My favorite candy is cotton candy and jelly bellies, specifically watermelon and bubblegum. My favorite TV show is ER, and I actually have every single series of the discs because I'm that much of like a fan. <laughs> and when I was like 13 years old, my family actually took me to Chicago to see where they filmed it in Cook County. And actually, I think that's when I actually had my passion to be in healthcare, but I didn't actually know that I wanted to be in healthcare. My favorite holiday is Christmas and I like Halloween. My favorite movies for the holidays are Nightmare Before Christmas, as well as Hocus Pocus, and my favorite, favorite, favorite is Christmas Story because I'm from Cleveland and every year I go to the Christmas Story house because it is a museum for those who don't know. I will say one of my biggest flaws is I always try to go above and beyond for everybody because I don't want to see them hurt or sad or just in bad situation. But typically that always turns around and bites me in the butt later on. One thing that I wish I knew when I was younger is be you unapologetically. Do things because you want to do it and not because other people want you to do it. Also, the only reason I'm really doing my makeup like this is because I was told that we had to take our pictures for our badges. And once I had the worst picture on my badge and even after I lost my badge and I had to replace it, they still gave me that same horrible freaking picture. Because the day that we took the pictures, I didn't even know that they were taking the pictures that day. I really hope you guys felt like you got to know me a little better while you guys remained entertained while I did my makeup. I don't know why I'm like this. I just wanted to know how do people raise their eyebrows like with one eyebrow? Anyways, I don't know what my orientation is going to entail and if I'm allowed to bring my phone in or not. If I am, I will try to vlog. If not, guys, that's what it is. Those who have noticed my eye, my lacrimal gland is displaced and I have to get it surgically fixed. However, I've been putting it off because it is my face so it makes me really nervous. Guys, thank you so much for watching and getting to know me a little better. 
Also, leave a comment down below about a fun fact about you so I can get to know you a little better. Also, follow my other platforms that you see linked down below so we can interact on different ones as well. We're having our pictures for our badges. That's the only reason I'm ending up doing my hair. But normally, on a 99.9% .9 of the time, you will see me with a ponytail or a bun. Because when a patient is manic or in one of their behaviors or in a symptom-driven behavior, the first thing they try to normally do is go for your hair. So if mine's wrapped up nice and tight, you can't get it. Another thing about me is I have never, ever, ever tried to catch up. I can't get past the smell of it. I don't know what it is, but I have never tried it. Now that I'm all done, I'm about to throw my sweater on and head out. Guys, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And make sure you turn your notifications on so you don't miss any upcoming videos.